All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, correspondence guest public participation. All right. West Valley PTO report. Uh, West Valley Teachers Organization. Um, hi, <laughs> I'm Sherry Hand, um, and um, so the middle school music teacher, and I'm going to go, I'm going to talk a little bit about our group, and then you're going to get a very small performance tonight. So um, I'd like to give a small introdu introduction to myself, since many of you don't know me yet. Um, originally from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, I'm a Uper, and moved to Montana about 10 years ago. And I, I taught in Troy for seven years and Drummond for two. And this is my first year at West Valley. Um, I am currently working on my master's in music education, and I'm very <coughs> active in the community and state. Um, I currently serve on the International Montana Choral Festival and Flathead Lake Music Band Boards, and I also sing with the Glacier Chorale and play in the Kalispell Community Band. So, um, and I'm very active in the Montana Bandmasters Association. So, enough about me. Um, <laughs> I am very excited to teach and grow the music program here. Um, this year I'm teaching six through eight bands, six through eight choirs, um, fifth grade music ed, we've done recorders, so sorry parents. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and uh, eighth grade elective, which includes the following for one trimester each, beginning guitar, drama, and technology and music. And I also provide lunchtime activities for students who don't want to go outside. Um, the choir, band, and drama classes have already had four concerts and events this year. And um, we have many more scheduled for towards the end of the year in May and June. So I have invited guest clinicians to some of my classes, um, including Dr. Jennifer Cooper, flute professor from University of Montana, and one of our own parents here at um, West Valley, Yafit Jones, professional trumpet player from the military, having served in the Marines branch. Mm -hmm. um, so this year, uh, we have managed to purchase brand new choir risers, and we used them for the first time at last month's choir concert. And um, there is much upgrading of equipment to do, so I'm sure you'll see more in the future. <laughs> um, and the students seem to be really excited about music, and hopefully I can help them give a spot to shine. Um, one student has volunteered to talk about uh, her experience in choir so far. This is Hannah Brabham. Brabham. <laughs> um, this year has been a very exciting year for West Valley School Choir um, and band. Um, we've had different songs in different languages, and overall it's been very, very fun. I've met some new people and earned some new friends, um, and all thanks to Miss Ham. She's been a wonderful choir director, and that is not even close to, she's just absolutely amazing. <laughs> um, she has... We have invested in new risers, which now kids will not fall off of, which is really nice. Um, it's very, they're very comfortable on when singing, and I have had a lot of fun this year being in choir, and I will definitely be in choir next trimester and in the following years. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Okay, so tonight I have invited the advanced seventh and eighth grade choir to sing two short songs for you, and Taylor's going to introduce the song. Uh, the first song is called Vashna Haba'a, and the second is Blue Skies. Vashna Haba'a is loosely translated to, in the year to come, as I sit on my porch and count the birds flying around, I will see children playing, running between houses and in the fields. You will see, you will see how good it is in the year to come. Blue Skies is a classic Irving Berlin song from 16 or 1926. The song includes Hannah Brabham and Mary Grace. Kenneth Key, I'm sorry. <laughs> As a soul. As a
Yeah. 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 So I'm Miss Andrews. This is my fourth year teaching at West Valley. I'm Sarah Matias. This is my ninth year teaching at West Valley. I'm Sarah Dankers. This is my 11th year teaching and my third at West Valley. And I'm Kate Wilson. This is my fourth year here, my 10th year teaching. And we're the second grade team. That's the, that's the grade we teach. <laughs> so we're gonna present you guys about the I did a rod because that's what we've been studying in class. And one thing we just want to mention is um, each of the classes differentiate and incorporate the Iditarod in different ways. Um, and so we all kind of do something different, but we also share lots of things with each other. Um, so what we've done is that we've used our background knowledge about Alaska to introduce the Iditarod. Earlier on, we, had a, we did a compare and contrast on Montana and Alaska. So it's really neat to see the kids pull things that they learned in a couple, a couple months ago um, to the Iditarod. We spent some days researching various mushers. The musher is the driver of the dog sled. And then the kids got to pick and research that musher. And um, they got to choose to do it by themselves or with a partner. And they documented all of this in a little packet that we had for them. They checked in with their mushers every single day and followed the journey along. And, and still are. It's yes, they still are. Tomorrow, there might be some that are finishing. So the kids are really excited about that. Um, and then we also watch daily highlight videos where there's like a drone that follows some of the sled dogs. So you can get a bird's eye view of the, the dog sleds. And then we also discuss and or research because as we're watching these videos, a lot of questions come up because there's so much information. Like we're still learning a lot. This is the first year we've done this with the kids. Um, something that's been really neat is that we've been able to take the Iditarod and put it in, tie it in with our reading, writing, and math. So for reading, we used um, Epic World Book, Encyclopedia Kids, Pebble Go, which are all subscriptions that the school um, subscribes to. So we are very grateful for all of those options because they were able to go on there and research Iditarods, sled dogs, listen to stories, they took notes, circle charts, and they took two column notes, and they will we'll talk more about it. Um, they've also incorporated in math, where the kids were able to look at how many miles their musher has traveled so far and add them up, how many more miles do they have to go to finish or go to the next checkpoint. And then, like I said, in writing, um, they've done three different writings all about sled dogs, and we'll share more with that in a moment. Okay, so this is correlated to our reading, and these are some different student examples of how we used it cross-curricular in reading. So this was the original piece from our Wonders curriculum that taught us about Alaska, and then we pulled this story from Epic, and then this is a World Book um, article that we use as well from one of the sus subscriptions we have. And then kids were able to pull notes, um, circle chart notes based mostly from our sled dog story here. And then we included a part of a storyboard as well. So they did an entertaining piece and used a storyboard to create their own fictional story. And then these are just two other examples of a circle note and how they put them into their own T-chart to call them notes. So they're doing this completely independent and the stars here are their subtopics and then the pinks are all of the details. So in math, um, one of our second grade standards is to be able to add four two digit numbers. Um, and so we kind of, we did that a while ago and we took um, the miles between the checkpoints and then added them together. Well, you'll see there's eight various checkpoints or eight two digit numbers. And so it was really fun to watch how they solved that and how they came up with the answer. Some went the rote traditional algorithm and they knew that right away and others were like, 
eight two digit numbers what are you talking about mm -hmm. so they drew pictures but you can see here they're regrouping to make their new 10 make their hundreds um and then a few of my kiddos i challenged to find out how many miles left in the race and when you say a thousand to a second grader they're like what a thousand so um this one here found 320 miles they had gone. And then I thought it was really neat how he represented 321. And then he knew how many more do I need to get to 10? How many more to 100? And that's how he came up with the answer for 679 miles left. Granted, this was last week, so we are much closer to the end now. Um, I have a few examples of the 100. Yeah, so tonight could be the night. At 7.05, Brent Sask will leave the checkpoint. So we'll find out. Um, so we have some student examples. My wish is Bridget Watkins. She's traveled 42 miles, 30 miles, 40 miles, 30 miles, 35 miles, 75 miles, 48 miles, and 41 miles. I regrouped my ones to make a 10, and I got two tens. That equals 20. And then I regrouped my, hun my tens to make uh, 300, which is three tens and then I had two extra tens and one extra one. I added these two equal 20 and these two equal 20 and 20 plus 20 equals 40 and I had one one so I added one one. Three hundreds so I added three hundred so it's three hundred forty one. I I added Nine plus one equals ten. Regroup here. I know nine plus one equals ten again. With again, regroup here. Four hundred plus six hundred equals a thousand. Now you know how many miles more miles my mushroom needs to travel. <laughs> And it's pretty funny because when you get the camera out, they get a lot more nervous. Like telling them here, they're just like, let me run this down for you. And then the camera came out. It was like, these are tens, right? So, um, but this one was a fun too. And I will point out, this was um, last week on Color Wars. So there, it's actually two different students. They're just in the same shirt. Well, one, one now, so. <laughs> I wish I was Bridget Watkins. She's traveled 42 miles, 30 miles. For my musher is Elizabeth Norris. And um, she traveled 300 miles. And I got 700 because I know 7 plus 3 or 3 plus 7 equals 10. So I just had to add two zeros. <laughs> So it's been really fun for them to show like their mental math. I don't think when I was in second grade, I was just adding hundreds to a thousand. And so to watch um, their mental math and then to be able to explain it, they've gotten really excited, like even on their own, when I didn't challenge them to do this today, a student came up and was like, my musher has traveled 172 more miles today. You know, just things like that have been super fun to watch and they're great. <laughs> Okay, so then in writing, um, we moved to, we call it a pie writing. So it's a persuasive writing, an informational writing, and then an entertaining piece. And uh, um, on the SVAC, they actually do something relatively similar to what we've been practicing. So I ha just have three examples of an entertaining piece because we, second grade, when they write personal narratives, it's a really hard concept for them to understand. So we've only practiced it a couple of times so far this year, but um, being able to tie in all of the information that they've learned about the Iditarod was like light bulbs going off. They were able to actually write some really cool entertaining pieces. So if you want to click the first one. It's March 6th and Christy is ready. We're on the go on the Iditarod trail. And then Christy is in Finger Lake and my sled breaks. And then a moose comes. Christy says, easy, that means go slowly. And then goes faster. And then when she doesn't see the moose, she will fix herself. Then she when she fixed it, she went on the next day. She was in a long road and she dropped 
a dog and kept going and then ran into a frozen lake. So she gets off her sled and gets her dogs and then gets her sled, goes to another route and the next day she they are in the grave the end. Yeah. So oh, sorry, sorry to play that one. So Go. they were able they were able to come up with characters, which a lot of them chose their actual mushers. And then they were able to come up with a setting and a problem and a solution and even more than one middle event, which also can be pretty challenging for second graders. So this is my next example here. Go. Today's a musher, Jesse Holmes, was ready for the Iditarod race. He was off to his first checkpoint, Willow. Suddenly, the bitter wind blew and the snow fell rapidly through the air. He couldn't see at all. Then they got to a frozen river. He shouted, gee, to his lead dogs to turn right, but they turned left because it was cracking. Then he heard with puffs and puffs, it was a Kodiak bear. He got out his trusty bear spray and spray. <laughs> <laughs> then the bear ran away and Jesse and his dogs got off the river and got to safety at Willow. Okay, and then this is my life. Today is the biggest day for most mushrooms. March 9th, 2022, 3 slash 9 slash 1922, Bush Vera with only five dogs. We are racing in the forest and it is hard to dodge the trees and there is a, a huge brown creature ahead and as we got closer it turns out it is a moose. The dogs start to bark. I yell easy the moose charges but the moose isn't charging at us. The moose is running away from us. Uh, Grizzly bear. Ooh, that was a close one. But... <laughs> <laughs> it's March. Today is the biggest day. Today is the biggest day. Oh, okay. There we go. Please try. No, you can. We tried really hard to keep families updated on what we were doing as well. So during this unit, we really noticed the communication upped a lot between the teachers and the parents, the kids and the parents, and, and all of us together. Um, we gave the kids the opportunity to check in on their mushers at home with their parents' permission. And so that kind of lended itself very easily to brothers and sisters, moms and dads, picking their own musher and following along as well. And it was just really cool. We got pictures on sick days of built Legos and other blocks that created the scene of the Iditarod. Uh, they would even bring in books that they noticed if they had a Balto book or another Alaska book, they'd bring it from home. And one of our families was even able to connect with their real musher, and she got a video from him through a friend in Alaska. So it was pretty cool. Um, and so kind of along with that, these are some pictures um, that were just shared from families, different, um, this student was sick, for almost all of last week and was devastated. And so he made his own Iditarod at home and set it up, it has the crowd and the mushers that inspired other, lots of others building at home. Um, and you can see this is the daily check-in. So a lot of students go home and check in. I know my own child gets up every morning and checks in on the Iditarod to make sure um, our whole family's gotten involved. We all have our own teams and it's just been an awesome event to um, connect home to school, but to also integrate all areas um, of academics. And these were just some parent, we asked parents um, what their thoughts were and if this is something that we should continue in the future. And the feedback was awesome um, for those that got you know back to us and they were excited as well. So and we just wanted to emphasize that we did this as it was connected to the materials provided in the curriculum that we have, but our eagerness and involvement in the Iditarod was kind of all our own. It was Emma's brainchild, so we didn't <laughs> think her, but we were really able to use what we have
to make real world connections. So thank you for letting us be here and thank you for all the materials provided. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. I have a musher. You can probably check it all the time. Yeah. It's not been great. You're starting on top. Yeah. Um, hello, we're the third great team. I'm Chelsea Belanger, and I, I think I've been here 12 years. I think it's my 17th year of teaching. I'm Bethany Knudsen. This is my 14th year teaching, my seventh at West Valley, and my third in Dirt. <laughs> and, and I'm Alicia Quet. This is my fourth year at West Valley. And I'm Ashley Thompson. This is my first year teaching and first year here. Um, we'll try to be short, sweet here. Um, but we just wanted to talk about, you know, as devastating as remote learning was through the whole COVID thing. Um, we wanted to present to you how much we've learned about technology and how we're putting that into our classroom. And it's just been really awesome. So this is just like what the children see when they come in the classroom. <laughs> they just spirit week last week. Um, there's two of us here. That's my student teacher, Miranda Lynn. She couldn't be here tonight, but yeah. So this is taking you through spirit week. That was I think camo day, <laughs> Western day. Um, I was gonna say hippie day. <laughs> Tropical day. And then color wars. Um, and then I just wanted to show you, this is um, a Google Sheets that I've created for just kind of put all of us on the same page with our writing. Um, I create the schedule and share it out and it keeps us on track and where we're going and everything. So it's been really helpful. So. Welcome to my winter classroom. Click on the teacher to get started. There we go. I didn't know it was going to do that either. Um, so one thing that we do with Google Slides is um, create sources to put uh, materials together. So um, that's that's me right there. Uh, and what we have is we have um, books in class too. So we have those books are hard copies, but we also put it in slides and then the students can access it through Google Classroom in order to um, to go back to the text in order to pull evidence from there. So with our narrative writing unit, we were um, looking at writing a, a scene from a story and we had several different snowman um, texts as it was January, so it's perfect timing. So one way we use this is we have <clears throat> access to read alouds online and we put those books um, in a slide and then the kids can go access that in order to go back to the text to pull out different sources for information. So um, we're just using slides and that's a bitmoji, which is just like a little yeah. digital version of ourselves. but. It's been a fun way for the kids to be able to um, to get access to the materials online as well as the hard copy materials, but just in a, a fun, visual, engaging way. So um, this is part of our narrative writing unit. The next one's real awesome. Uh, <laughs> we do an opinion, we had to do an opinion writing piece where we um, have two character viewpoints. Um, one is from the wolf's point of view, and one's from the pigs, and the students have to choose an opinion that they agree with and then defend it with a book. Um, so I had just the pig, but then they said, where's the wolf? So I had to create a, a wolf person too. But, um, and then again, they have access to these in person in the classroom, but also digitally so they can go back to the text and pull out information to include in their writing. So um, these Bitmoji slides, we just have, uh, we sometimes just have them up on our internet screen or we have them as part of Google Classroom where the kids can go back to the slides to access things. So just uh, different visual, fun, engaging ways to pull the kids in and um, use them digitally and be able to access materials in more than one way as well. So we have one copy of a book that can still go back in there and every student can get access to that same book because most of those are available online as read alouds too, and to be able to pull out that text evidence. So these are just, just different examples of how we're now using our um, Chromebooks, which we're really thankful to have as a one-to-one -one student access now. It's been huge. Mm -hmm. So for our students, especially since many of them are so tech driven anyways that that is how they want to get information that is their processing of their brains it's just it's tech heavy so we want to give access to that and this is just a an engaging way to kind of get access to those materials digitally as well as in person yep there we go <laughs> and this is just like another example like bethany's saying um 
we do a fractured fairy tale at the end of the year. And this is a Cinderella room where there's tons and tons of different types of um, how to write Cinderella and they get to write their own. Um, so just like another example, and I just want to say again, like what Bethany had talked about, how amazing it's been to have computers. Last year we shared two carts by the end of the year, but so it was only 12 computers um, a, a class or and the year before it was only six a class that we were able to share. So it's just been really amazing to be able to let kids all be doing the same thing, all grabbing a computer. So that's that example of that. And then um, this has been really fun. Look at, um, I know that Trevin plays it at home, <laughs> but it's a, such a cool resource. And this again is having like every student has a computer. We played a homophone game um, two weeks ago and it lets them go through and there's so many different games, but they answer three questions, then they get to place their character. And it kind of like is just an interactive game. But again, just being able to have each student be able to play the game. We used to have to have two teams for the whole class. Um, so it's just been really fun and just like different resources that we can use to go over the material. That's me. Um, another really cool thing that we've been able to do with the one to one um, home co correspondence is we have um, five different spelling lists for students. So those students who are testing proficient on grade level, um, we can give them that extra challenge and give them a harder list. Or maybe students who are struggling with the on grade level test, we can um, structure it for a way um, to make it a little bit easier for them where they're still being challenged but still um, having success with that. So. Um, before, when you had just your paper form, you would only be able to get uh, one list out to the thought of doing five different lists would be next to impossible. But um, now students can go on to a site spelling city, they click on uh, which, what list they're on, and then they can show us um, their score on that list. So that's really cool with that one to one Chromebook correspondence. Um, another thing that we have been able to do um, just with a lot of students being out this year on remote, we've um, created an online platform where students can go, they can select the day of the week. Um, and then from there, they can select what subject it is they need to work on. And so each day gives them a daily breakdown of what we're doing in class. Um, a lot of times students, maybe they're at home and they're sick or not, not sick, but they're quarantined. And then that way they're not missing out on learning and they're still, still able to access the same materials that we use in class accessing wonders, reading the same stories. And um, math is just one of those subjects that just really um, builds on itself very quickly. So this way they're able to get that math lesson and not miss out on it. Um, they're healthy enough to work on that. We have videos for them. Then we also have our Think Central um, that goes with our Go Math curriculum. They can get more practice through there, um, do practice and homework. Um, reflex is something that we use in extra math to help them build that math back fluency. Um, so just different things that they can do at home. Um, it's been very user friendly for students to use. So those who have been at home, it's pretty much just walks the students through, um, which has been nice for parents because students can be really self-sufficient with this um, way of accessing it. Everything's like all on one site that just goes to home to families. And then another quick thing. Oops. Um, we were able to do a Grinchmas Day in third grade. It was a traditional thing um, where we're able to invite, invite in families. Um, it was really cool this year just because it hasn't been able to happen for two years. So um, another neat thing was we were able to have grandparents that were in visiting at that time were able to come in. Uh, we did like a brunch breakfast um, potluck style Grinchmas theme and um, each of the classrooms were transformed into Whoville scenes. Um, a lot of positive feedback from parents, just really happy to be able to be in the classrooms, maybe a smaller setting, um, come in, see the classrooms, have breakfast with their kids, and um, lots of positive feedback with that. So, what a surprise to get from the bench. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Thank you for having yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. No mystery why I love teaching with all of these guys. They're amazing. Um, but 
not as amazing to follow up in the presentation because mine is not near as exciting and I have to have them help me with my graphics and things. <laughs> um, I'm going to give you a paper so that you have a little more in-depth These are just the slides that you'll have the figures to go with. I'm Tanya Jewett, the K4 instructional coach here at West Valley. And as you know, my responsibilities here are to supervise the reading and math intervention programs. That's one of my responsibilities. And a large component of that is to oversee the eight paras who work with our tier two groups. We're so blessed to have these paras who do such an outstanding job working with our struggling students. These groups offer the differentiation that struggling students need to make rigorous growth. And our hope is to intervene early so that most will not need intervention later. To put the para job into perspective, the eight title paras run 35 intervention groups, a combination of reading and math. And we were so thankful this year to be able to return to a more normal schedule as last year's COVID schedule cut into the amount of groups we were able to run. However, by the end of this past January, it became obvious we had to make some serious changes to our groups. One important factor in running successful intervention groups is that they must be consistent. And part of that consistency is in how often you meet with the kids. So you see by January, we realized that our amazing intervention groups were not making the progress that they should be making because their teachers the eight paraprofessionals were constantly being pulled from their regular jobs to sub in the classrooms, mm -hmm. which is why I want to talk to you today about the substitute teaching situation by, yeah, here at West Valley. So let's look at some data. This first graph illustrates the staff absences K-8 for this school year. The red shows the absences and blue shows the number of positions that we were unable to fill each month. That means that we had to pull Paris to teach in those classrooms. The second graph shows the unfilled positions in the elementary alone. The middle school has the same issues that they're dealing with, but I'm going to zoom in on just the elementary so that I can speak to how we handle it. Each time a paraprofessional is pulled from their groups to sub for a classroom, there are about four groups that are canceled. Depending on their duty schedules, a para can have anywhere from three to six groups a day, and there are an average of at least six kids in each group, so about 24 kids are affected. Not only does canceling a group interfere with the consistency that the intervention group needs in order to be successful, but classroom teachers are highly affected by the groups being canceled. So let's look at one grade level. It happens to be second grade that's here today. And in our second grade, there are 99 students. When we divided them into groups, three pairs each took about eight students of high need and two teachers each took eight students of concern. The other three teachers took groups of 13 to 17 students who were on grade level or approaching grade level. And then we also had some groups working in the special ed room of six, three, and five. And it's important to note that when we pull pairs, um, from their groups to sub, we try not to pull from the special ed groups. So those ones still continue to have that consistency. During the skills group's time, the whole grade level moves to the group that best suits their needs. So what happens when one whole group is canceled or even two or three groups are canceled? The teachers who are trying to teach a class of students who are at grade level or above grade level suddenly have a handful of students who can't perform at that level also in the classroom for that half an hour. Now our teachers are great. It's not a huge deal every now and then. However, let's go back to this slide. It's a lot of kids displaced throughout the month. It gets very trying to plan for extra students who can't do the work the other students are doing, especially when you don't know how many will be sent back to your room on any given day. By January, we knew we couldn't do it anymore. We took our eight title pairs and designated four as subs, while the other four have continued to work with intervention groups. Of course, that means that we have cut in half the number of students who can be served by an intervention group. So as I started digging into the data, I wondered, is this another COVID issue? 
is it something that will begin to get better over time? And this led me to create the final graph, which shows absence trends for the past four years. I don't think it's direct relation to COVID, other than it may be related somewhat to the issues we've seen since COVID started, which are the great resignation and the ample availability of jobs at higher pay, higher pay than what subbing offers. So I'm hopeful that maybe this data will start conversations about what we can do to attract more substitutes to the West Valley pool. We're a very large school with a very large staff. It stands to reason that on any given day, several people will be gone due to illness, sick children, appointments, and personal days. What we don't have is a large pool of regular subs to work from. I've not done a lot of research on sub pay, but I did contact Whitefish and they pay 25 more a day than we do. And it would be interesting to see what other districts in the area pay and how successful they are at keeping their absences still. I do know that Costco, Hobby Lobby, and several other businesses just up the road are paying more generous wages, but it also includes benefits, not to mention year-round work. So I can't in good conscience bring up the need for higher subpay without, without also mentioning our amazing Paris who work for far less than hut and ranch businesses are paying and less than our subs are making. Yet oftentimes they are filling in as subs their daily jobs are so critical to the success of our school. In fact, if you spend a day at the school, you will quickly see that our school would not run without these wonderful employees. They work with some of our neediest students, plus make sure we have recesses and lunches. They are the safety specialists of this school. I would like to consider paying them a salary that is in line with the specialists that they truly are. So as I said earlier, I hope this information sparks some serious conversation about what we can do to attract more subs to our district and what kind of pay we can offer our parents to ensure that we retain them. I'm calculating this right, but are about half of the second graders then being pulled out? For special? So I wondered if someone asked, would ask that. Those are intervention groups. So um, with COVID, I think that is something we've seen as a higher percentage of kids in yeah. those early grades. Looks like about 45 out of 90. Yeah. So yeah. we used to typically um, expect about 80% of our kids to be about at grade level, 75 to 80. Mm -hmm. And I think this group was more like 69%, 64%, somewhere in there. So we've seen quite a quite a difference in the makeup of our kids. So that's why the need for pairs is ever greater. So yeah. high. And I think our demographics are changing too. And as our um, numbers increase, we're just going to see more, more need there too. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Sorry. Oh, the, oh, Sherry Darren yeah, here. Oh, yeah. Isn't that right. curriculum director? Yeah. yeah. No, that's what I mean. Any more teachers? teachers? Yeah. No, I think that's it. Okay. Thank you, everybody. That was awesome. Now we are on to curriculum director update. Um, I'm going to give you this little packet to reference, although. You want to keep it, but <laughs> you can look at it. Um, and we always give the disclaimer to people who've already presented. If you have, you know, want it, if you want to stay, you certainly can. If you want to get home to your families, you can certainly do that too. And we will just jot down your names and write it down. Your to you. So thanks, guys. I was here, I think, to talk to you in September about doing a math curriculum review. Um, cause we've had full math, I believe, six years, and it's um, important that we're reviewing our curriculum regularly. We also found during COVID when we were needing to have kids access our curriculum online, there was a lot of struggles to get the go back. Um, hence, they're not going to be publishing anymore. <laughs> anyway, so we needed to look at some curriculums. Um, so uh, we have a curriculum review team, one teacher from each grade level. Um, we've met seven times so far, so at least once a month since October or September. Um, we have created um, together, as a team, we created this rubric that we've been using to 
go through curriculums. Um, we've watched presentations from the publishers and um, we have some print materials and we're able to get online and see their online platform. Um, the categories that you'll see is content, organization and structure, the student experience, the teacher support, the assessments, and then the technology and the online platform. And so we're rating all of the curriculums. Um, I got two, three, three curriculum in the elementary they're reviewing and four in the middle school. And between those, two of them are K-8 curriculums. Um, the third one in elementary is K-5, and the other two middle school are 6-8 plus algebra. Um, we, let's see, our last meeting will be um, March 29th, a few days after spring break. Um, probably should have our uh, rubrics done um, by this Friday, and then um, I'll be kind of scoring that up so that we um, can come together and make um, a recommendation for you, um, the board. But um, we kind of have noticed that two have really surfaced to the top in this whole review process. So I did reach out to two um, Envision and Into Math. Um, to ask them if they would be willing to do a parent uh, community presentation. And so there was something in the newsletter Friday, and then there will be a document on the website by Wednesday. Um, there's going to be, uh, Envision is going to do a parent presentation third Friday evening. And then um, the next Tuesday will be in, uh, into math. And on the document that I'll share on the site, um, Parents will be able, and community members, board members, any of you, and teachers even, just um, once you get to the review form, you can state who you, who you are in relation to the school. But, um, and then the parents will be able to, you know, see the presentation, ask questions, and then they'd be able to go into the platform and kind of see what it's like helping your student or from the student experience, parent experience, and then uh, get that into me um, during spring break. Um, you know, it's, you can never please everyone, but everyone should have a voice. And it's gonna be nice to hear all those interesting ideas that the parents have. And it's been so great working with our team. Some of them are here. Well, Sarah's here. Okay, Sarah's here. <laughs> <laughs> Second grade. <laughs> She's here. Alicia is on the team too, but she just cut it up. Um, so yeah, so in the, the way that the original curriculums that we looked at were chosen was looking on ed reports for how they are with fidelity and user friendliness and reliability to the standards and then um, also having been published within five years so we didn't want to pick something that was from 20 years ago um, so yeah any questions about that is this for the whole school or just elementary k8 yes so i have some um preliminary quote, quotes, but we're working on numbers and stuff. I had to make sure I had the right numbers of teachers at each grade level and different things like that. And it will be a six year um, proposal, um, which we do pay up front. So it'll be six years um, worth of the digital and print and other components. And I'll break that down at the next board meeting for you. Our vision and math goal. K eight, so are they? The yeah, they're both K eight and algebra, which you know I was open to if we needed a different curriculum at middle school, but it's kind of worked out that they all really prefer the K eight, okay. which is nice. Plus and algebra, just plus algebra, yeah. Um, and they both have an accelerated um, built into the middle school where a student could go, you know, six, seven, eight faster to get algebra in eighth grade. Just in the class, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, okay, if there's no other questions about that, I just want to make sure you might have noticed that um, we're going to have a family math night again. Okay. So um, thanks to Paula, who's not here, and the PTO. Oh, the PTO kind of asked her, like, oh, I wonder if we could do one. And Paula's like, I know who to talk to. And so she twisted my arm. No, I'm just kidding. And, um, I really missed it last year. We couldn't do, have parents and stuff in the building. And so it's exciting. But some things we learned from the last time is we're too big to have it all in one night. So yeah. we're going to host two nights. Um, 
just a lot more of those younger littles and their parents come. So we're going to do a K2 night and a third K8 grade night. Um, if you're interested in coming or serving dinner or helping out in any way, let me know. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. All right, principal reports. <laughs> so we are um, knee deep in the hiring cycle right now, um, which obviously you can tell by the couple of grade level presentations here tonight, the hiring process is, is extremely important. <laughs> try to hire people who are smarter than you and get out of their way, right? <laughs> so, yep, that's what we try to do here. Um, we have one position open um, classroom-wise at, at the elementary level in second grade um, and an open PE position at the moment. So um, we actually have interviews starting tomorrow and they'll probably happen <clears throat> pretty much all week um, in some capacity or another, because I know that the middle school is also going through um, a lot of hiring um, at the moment. And one thing to highlight about that, I don't think we can um, nail down a reason one way or the other, but the application numbers are way down um, than, than they typically are at this point. It's been open you know, for, for a while now. And normally we're uh, looking at 40 applications. Um, I think we're at 13. For, for a classroom position, which is incredibly low. I did reach out to a couple other principals in the Valley, um, and they are experiencing the same thing. And in fact, it's, it's even worse um, in other places. Um, so uh, again, I don't know if we can have the time to talk about why now, but um, it's, it's probably going to be tough out there for the next few years. Um, you know, I think we've got some good applicants. That's, that's not the issue, but the, the numbers are down. My guess is they'll continue to go down. But any, anyway, yeah, so uh, basically I've always said in this position, once spring break hits, the year is over. Um, it goes by so fast and you're focused on getting everything ready to go for next year. So um, master scheduling is going on and that's a, a huge bear to wrestle with and tackle every year. Uh, and as we continue to grow, um, we continue to get creative with, with our special schedule uh, and uh, just our daily uh, master schedule. Uh, one challenge we will have next year is uh, six sections of second grade. We'll make it so that um, uh, they might not necessarily have the same prep times because we don't have six specials. So we might have to go to an alternating um, ABC day. Um, we're kind of kind of have a an idea of maybe doing like a specials time with a lunch time so that they can have you know like. Um, some kids go to specials, three classes go to specials, uh, three classes go to lunch, and then they kind of switch. So there's some, um, you know, neat things that we have um, to kind of think about that we typically don't have to think about. But uh, yeah, so that's where we are. Any questions? For me? I don't, I brought my computer up. <laughs> 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 to make you look smart. Tomorrow. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> Throw some things on there. <laughs> so Tina couldn't be with us tonight. She's she had her surgery and she's doing well. She's back at school half days, but uh, she's dealing with something at home too. I think a health issue of her mother-in-law or something. So she asked me to convey a few things. And I would agree with Richard. It is always better to hire people that are smarter than you. I'm sorry I didn't do that in the principal roles, but I tried. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, it's not true. They are very much uh, so third trimester starts tomorrow. I uh, just want to know that there's some different electives being offered uh, in the third trimester, rocketry, uh, art sculpture, and tech and music. So those will be different and kind of interesting ones for them. Uh, they were able to do some field trips. Fifth grade went on the forestry, forestry expo. Sixth grade went to Big Creek. And uh, seventh grade went on a boat trip to Glacier Park. And I think, was there any others, Mary Kay, or was that? Uh, I think we went to Big Creek. I mean, the sixth grade is going to Big Creek in May. There you go. Yes. That's perfect. Yes. <laughs> she, she didn't mention that, but thank you for being here and saying that. So, and same like what Richard said, there's interviews coming up. Uh, they have a couple of SPED positions open, PE, uh, also English and uh, math. So uh, they've got a lot of interviews to do as well. So uh, that's the middle school report. Just jump in. Yep. Okay, let's go right on. <laughs> super tech. So we, of course, are knee deep in the bond preparation, trying to get that out there as much as we can. Working with Ball Media, they did a great job of putting together the uh, the videos 
uh, for that. Um, just a just really quality work, and you know it's it's a good depiction of some good uh, feelings about the school, but also some some where there's some real needs, you know, for the school. And so I know a lot of that's been done on Facebook and uh, YouTube, and so we're looking at putting it on Thrillshare too, so we can get out to more of our folks who don't have those things. Um, but we'll be doing some more videos as well. I think I'm in negotiations with Richard. I think you either have to do the tour of the school or I have to do it. And I thought, you know what? You look more like Brad Pitt. So we're going to do it. So, so there you go. Can't walk through an airport. I know. It's tough. It's tough. So, uh, so we got that coming up and continuing with that. We're going to do some other things, postcards, you know, getting those out to everybody. So we want to send it out not just to our parents, but to the whole community so they're aware of what's going on and make sure that they understand it. Uh, flyers, banners, yard signs. I'm going to be talking, I think, with the PTO tonight, uh, going through some of the things that they can help with and also the union, I think, tomorrow to see if they can help with some of the things because it's a little bit different for those organizations. They can actually get out the yes vote or the no vote, I guess, if they want to. But uh, we as a school, we can only just say that, you know, give them the information at hand, you know, whatever it might be. So, so we'll work with them too. Uh, we'll use our thrill share a little bit more on that as well, making sure that gets out there. Ballots go out on the 14th of April. They're due back by May 3rd. Uh, they can be mailed in or they can uh, be walked into the building as well. So um, we just want to make sure that, uh, you know, that our parents know for sure, but also that the community knows as well. So we're trying to get as many ways out there. Radio, we're looking at that too, possibly doing some advertising on the radio. Uh, and then coinciding with the math night, maybe doing some things with that too and getting an open house for that as well. So. Uh, I think what, I think the next video is going to be more of a taking a tour through the school, kind of seeing you know where we're at, you know going down into the basement and seeing where kids are at and doing those kinds of things, kind of like we did before. We did we called it the deficiency tour when we did it last time, and we had people come to the building and walk through and they had a like a check off sheet of the things they had to go look for, you know, in the mm -hmm. building, and so that worked uh, pretty well as well. So we'll do some of those things and we'll just try to get the word out the best we can. Any other ideas? Any thoughts about it? I think usually utilizing our social media platforms to really celebrate the things we're doing that are fun. Like last week was Spirit Week, and we had all the different you know days and kids dressed up, but just putting that out there for people to see like this is yeah. stuff our kids are doing. And I think that'd be neat for the community members, especially the ones that don't have kids here and don't see it day to day. Yeah, good idea. Okay. And Richard kind of touched on this a little bit already, but we have right now we have I believe twelve openings still. So we've got uh, one full-time middle school English, one full-time middle school reading, and we've got three for the English position, five for the reading position. We have one elementary music position open up, and we have one person for that so far. Two middle school math, we have two people put in for that one so far. K-8 librarian, we've got two people for that one. Second grade position, uh, we have 12 for that one. And like Richard was saying, I mean, normally you'd have 35 to 40, mm -hmm. you know, for those positions. I mean, so it's pretty, the numbers are low for sure, which we were kind of sort of expecting that to a degree. Um, mm -hmm. We have two PE positions, uh, seven, the seven spot or seven people for that one. Superintendent position, we have one so far. And for the uh, SPED uh, positions, we have two SPED positions and we have two uh, possibles with that one as well. So I do have some good news and she's sitting here actually tonight. I mean, you, you guys will get the opportunity to approve this young lady. And so, but we were very excited. Mark and I interviewed uh, Catherine. Kathleen. And, uh, <laughs> Kathleen, Kathleen. So, yes, yes, Kathleen, Kat, you know, and so, uh, and she's at Fairmont Egan right now. And so uh, she had been doing a lot of similar things to what we're doing here at our school. And she actually applied for the library position. And as we read her resume, we were kind of like, hmm, I wonder if she'd be interested in the tech job because some of the things she's doing there tied into what we're doing here. So we gave her a call, sure enough, and brought her in. And we coerced her. We got her in there and said, you can't wait until you take a job. She did it. So it's good. So anyways, did you want to mention anything? No, <laughs> really excited. Good. All right. So I guess one thing to talk about a little bit is, you know, and, and maybe for this position, the superintendent position in particular, I know we decided not to go with MTSBA or VIA or somebody to do an ex more, I guess, extensive search. And that's something that's still on the table. If you want to try to consider that, it's, uh, you know, the, the job does close on the 18th. You know, it doesn't mean you won't get a few more candidates coming before then. Um, 
of course, you can't guarantee anything just because you go through MTSBA or those things either that that's going to change necessarily. You know, so um, I don't know. You want to have a discussion yeah. about that and talk about it a little yeah. bit? Yeah, okay. I, I, I just like if these the numbers that you gave and that you, you talked about, Richard, for people who have applied, does that include Filipinos? I mean, I hate to, I don't mean <laughs> that's fine. That's okay. I don't, I, I don't, don't mean to be that way, but it yeah. does it. Um, yeah. When I went through them, I did not include. Them. I counted them in mine. Did you? Yeah. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Uh, is that correct word to me? I, yes. You know? yeah. Okay. I'm not. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> foreigners, foreigners, whatever I call them. Yeah. yeah. Speak up for other countries. Oh. So. Yeah, it's about fifty five hundred dollars to go through MTSBA, and I think oh. Mia is about five thousand. Okay. You know, so they're pretty close. You know, and. And I was really disappointed because MTSBA won't even let us post the superintendent position unless we pay them the full amount. Really? So how much? Again? $5,500. $5, $5, $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. $5. Well, well they'll it's, do the whole a thing, it, yeah. but I mean, they yeah. put together yeah. a packet and they try to recruit, but. Um, in a week? I, no, we have only got one week. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, they no, you could open it up for longer. Oh, well, we have to open yeah. it up. Is it on the yeah. OPI? It is on the OPI. Yeah, I mean, I that, we did. Yeah. We did advertise it on uh, in the spokesman review, the paper in, in Spokane as well, and our papers. Did you put it on? Did you put it on Sam? Um, I didn't see it on there. No, they don't really have a. They do. Site for that. They have employment opportunities oh, that, on there. Yeah. Yeah. They know. I mean, yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. So, so I mean, it's a. I mean, there's no guarantees, no. you know, when you do it, you know, and so. Uh, do you know how many other? Opening there's a lot. 30, 30 plus there's right a lot in the state. Yeah. How many schools are in the state? Oh, there's a lot. But and there's a lot of big schools. Districts, but... And people people aren't quitting to go somewhere else. They're just quitting. Yeah. Quitting and retiring. It's been a rough couple of years on superintendent. Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, with some of the difficulties, not just with this job, but in, in particular, and things that you have to start asking on your interviews as well is, do you have a place to live here? If you don't have a place to live here and you get the job, have you looked for housing in the area? Because several districts in our area have offered people jobs, and then they had to, a couple of weeks later, had to turn them back because they could not find a place to live. I mean, it, you know, it wasn't even matter that they could afford it or not, they couldn't even find any place, you know. So those are questions that have to be asked too. So if any of you have extra room in your homes, you know, you want to take people in. <laughs> and they're expensive. I know some of the district five is putting out some of the rentals. And yes. it's like a three bedroom, yeah. one and a half bath house for twenty five hundred dollars yes. a month. Yeah. So I mean it's insane. It's it's good anyway. I mean more than my mortgage. My used, house is way bigger. And they and they're they're being snatched up before they even hit the yeah. ground. So I guess the question yeah, I don't know is, what we do you want, want to do, to do it or do you want to just try it for this rest of this week and see what happens and then go from there? I don't, think, I don't, I don't think we're going to gain that much by going through the... Probably not. Probably yeah. not. And I yeah. think that we're going to be inevitable to have to open it up for a longer period of time. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, consideration of new hire Kathleen Kuchera. Yes, yeah. not Catherine. <laughs> it's a weird one. Not Catherine. <laughs> Protect director. So, and yeah, so we, like I said, we interviewed her on uh, Monday and uh, we were very excited that she's uh, got a lot of enthusiasm for the position. And um, Mark, Mark took her on a little tour after her interview and I think he asked some pretty good questions along the way. and. And I think even before she got back to uh, to her other school, we called her and asked her if she wanted a position. And sure enough, she said yes. So we're very excited to have her uh, on board for next year. Well, I didn't scare you off. <laughs> yeah, <I don't> know. <laughs> yeah. So I would highly recommend Kathleen. Yes. No. Yes. 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 Right. Oh, man. Well, I want to call her Cap because you go by Cap. I right? do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. Motion to approve her hire. Thank you. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Consideration of student attendance agreement for West Valley student attending SD5. And this is one from September. We just got oh. back. Okay. So. I'll make a motion to approve the student attendance agreement. I'll second. All right, a motion and a second. Any discussion? This was just one more that missed the last time. No, we've just gotten the mail. So they just were slow signing it, sending it back. Okay. Okay, any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Consideration of pay increase for activity bus driver. So this is one that's been kind of on the back burner for a while. You know, we did give an increase to our subs, you know, in the pay that they get and whatnot. And David Brewer has been doing this for years now, and he's been getting the same pay pretty much for the whole time. And he's great. He does a great job. He loves doing it. And I didn't see it in here, but how much was the increase? What were we going to? So it has been at um, only 14 for like seven years. Yeah. So we're suggesting an increase to $17 an hour for the activity bus. And you know, like I said, it's been years since he's even, and he doesn't say a thing. He hasn't asked for anything, you know, at all, but he does a great job with the kids and has a great attitude. And I would suggest the uh, $17 an hour uh, from the $14 an hour increase for the activity bus driver. Motion to approve. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Consideration of MTSDA annual renewal. I didn't see the price. I know. I'm trying. Do we have a price on that, Cecilia? Oh, it's know? not on, it's that. on, that. It's not not on the not sheet. 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 The sheet shows sheet. different things that you get. For yeah, the sheet value, was. But, but it's. <laughs> I will say this. MTSDA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've okay. worked with them for years, and to be honest with you. Uh, we get we get our bang for our buck with them because we you know we yeah. call them all the time and ask for you know information legal advice you know and things like that they have trainings that don't cost you anything you know when you go to the trainings and different things so value for the money that you pay is tremendous say, actually so you one hundred for the yeah. year so that's that's well worth it actually yeah for that because and even lots of our staff can go to the trainings too and so it's just you know the administration or whatever so board members you're taking advantage of it too. And, so I would highly recommend staying with MTSBA for those services. What, what's our option? Not doing it? Well, you know, you can you can do Calvary? like some people go through Bia Calva. She's another. She's a lawyer in Missoula, and she does policy work too. And she does a lot of the. She doesn't. She does do trainings, but generally speaking, I think you still have to pay for some of those trainings when you go through them. But uh, uh, I think overall. You, and I like Bia. I think she does a good job. And I've talked to her about some different things too. But mm -hmm. I think MTSBA has a broader spectrum of mm -hmm. things they can give you and provide for you as a school district no. at this time, anyway. So, I'll make a motion to approve renewing our annual membership to MTSBA. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Consideration of proposed 22-23 calendar. Okay. First, I want to thank Alicia Hamill and the crew. I don't know who all is. Anybody else on that crew in here? You guys, good job. <laughs> Sir, thank you for being on that committee. <laughs> and uh, you did a great job. And so 
uh, what seemingly, you know, should be a, and, and a, you know, a fun task or a simple task can sometimes move into something much more difficult at times. So I want to thank you for your work on that because you did a great job and, and the, the calendar you see before you was agreed upon by the committee and the administration and um, I would do you have any I, questions? I just have a question sure. about spring break. Yep. Um, it, this coordinates with School District 5. It does. And hopefully School District 5 will coordinate with the colleges this year because all no, the colleges are just all it. over. I doubt it. They yeah, haven't yeah. for the last 10 years or yeah, longer. Yeah, they don't usually. But yeah. we're coordinating with School District And we five. try to stay with School District 5 on Christmas and spring sure. break. Yeah. yeah. So that's good. That's good. Question on coordinating with School District 5. Was there thought given to early out Wednesdays instead of late start Fridays? There was. There was some for that. And, you know, the, that's no kind way of a to tough hit, one. Hit the number of hours. Yeah. They're, they're not going to hit their number of hours yeah. in Kalispell. Okay. So yeah. Because of the grant they've got, they can get away with some of that. And, and some of that with Kalispell, the reason they went to that early out was during the pandemic. And so they didn't really have like specific things they did during that time, like professional development and whatnot. It was more time for the teachers just to kind of get, because they were doing both, like hybrid right. learning and those kinds of things. And so um, we found, at least in, you know, what we, because we've tried them all too. We've done them all. You know, we've done the where you do the full day ones, we do the, you know, so often you do the half day, part day, different things. And so what we kind of see or have seen with the early release time is, that the kids don't take it as seriously, you know? And so they look at it like, especially in the, when you get like more towards the middle school, because it's hard to teach for a half hour, 25 minutes, as opposed to that full 45 or 50 minutes, you know? So you're kind of cutting it in half. So your discipline tends to go up, your different things start. Teachers don't always teach the same way. I don't mean that's in a bad way, but they don't always teach the same way necessarily. So we found with the late start, while it's a shorter period of time, it's more frequent or was more frequent than we were doing it. And that's concentrated time where they haven't had kids yet. They're fresh and they're ready to go. Yeah. You know, so. This is currently meeting our demand for teachers' education. Then. What was that? It's meeting the demand for yes. the education for yeah. the teachers and yeah. the right thing for that. Yeah. We need a motion to approve the proposed calendar. Make a motion to approve the proposed calendar. I'll second it. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Um, just have a question about what the purple color dates are. There wasn't anything in the key on purple colors. Conferences in November. Those are conference days. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Consideration of adopting resolution estimating changes in our middles for fiscal year 23. You want that one too. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun. Explaining. Well, <laughs> and what I know, this is just the ballpark. We won't know until August what our actual numbers will be. So I did my best to estimate. <laughs> I was on the phone with everybody and everybody I could find to help me. <laughs> so that's all I know about that. So those are our permissive levies. So when you go through, it's so like the building permissive. So I give you an example. Building permissive levy can change from year to year because you can, when you go for a permissive levy for the, for the building reserve, you get $100 per kid plus $15,000 per school. Well, we're just considered one school. So you get the $15,000 plus $100 per kid is the most you can do for a permissive levy. We use that money for redoing the floors every year in the gyms or the, the filtration system and all the work they do, keeping up on the heating systems and the duct work and things like that. And we also use it for the outside parking lots to have those resurfaced every year. So those are contracts we have in place to help that money will help pay for that. We've also used it for uh, the shop that will be going up this summer that we've already purchased, you know, some of those things. And you could use it for if you were going to add on like we did last year with the building 
back the other two years, you could use it for some of that too, plus some other things. So you kind of have to have a, an idea of what you're going to use it for, but it doesn't have to be like specific, specific necessarily. So, and then some of them just change, you know, depending on, you know, tuition fund can change depending on, you know, the needs of, you know, what you have in that, in that particular education fund. That tends to stay pretty close to the same adult education fund. Technology, see that, that one's zero now. So, um, we haven't done anything with that for now. Yeah. I noticed the largest portion of it is the transportation fund. Is that, um, does that include all of the bus routes and all the transportation then? It includes what is this is this would be the change. This is so the change for this is the change okay. for here. Yeah. Yeah. And I went this, to yeah. the budget workshop um, that Masbo did last week or two weeks ago and they said, you know, with the rising cost of um, service for the buses and fuel, they said estimate high. If yeah. it's lower, better, but better to go high. And what's our mill work? Uh, yes. Well, I know our tax value is 13. I want to say 13. Like total. Well, no, each one, because you know it's divided. Right. But well, it has more, been changed. I'd have to go look at it. I'm not sure. Oh, I see. Yeah. Does transportation change include new housing developments and stuff like that as a projection? It can. Well, plus um, you have another route, too. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and I know some of it, you know, we can get reimbursements from the state, but again, um, it is hard to estimate because I think, was it last week they approved another 600 homes and so, yeah. Let's see how, what is our taxable that, value? Yeah. We don't, we don't figure that in yet, do we? No. No, because I, because when I calculated this, I had to kind of give an estimate of what I yeah. thought our taxes, our tax base would be. I really won't know because who knows what we've grown the last year. So it really is just an estimate, unfortunately. But August will know. <laughs> okay. Do we need a motion to approve yep. the estimate? I'll make a motion to approve it. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> All right, consideration of accepting resignation of Emily Black, Clay Keller, and Kelsey Schwenk. So yeah, we've got a few more here. And so, you know, some of them are like Emily is selling her house. And they're like, I hope we don't have more of this because they're selling their houses and getting more, you know, yeah. quite a bit more than what they paid for them. And then I think she's moving to Alabama. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, Alabama and then, uh, Clay, uh, Clay has some different reasons for resigning, but uh, and then Kelsey Swank, I think, is just going to take a year off and see if it's what she wants to continue to do, you know. And so you're seeing more and more of that, you know, as a general rule, and not just here. I mean, this is, you know, it isn't even just statewide, it's nationwide, you know. And so um, we're working on those, you know, retention and recruitment things throughout the state, not just here in West Valley, but because um, we know. You know, there's things we have to do to entice people a little bit more to go into the profession. So, anyway, reluctantly, I would, you know, recommend the three resignations. But we do have good candidates for their positions, and that's which is nice, but still nice to keep people here cohesive and everything. So, what is Kelsey's age? She was second grade. Thank you. I hear Mr. Keller's interested in hanging around for football next year. Yeah, so I think occasionally. He, yeah. yeah, so he's going to keep coaching. So yeah. that's great. He's done a good job. I will be accepting resignation of Emily Black, Clay Keller, and Kelsey Schwinn. A second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, and then information item, the January cash reconciliation, January fund, 115, uh, 182 reports, February activity account, bank reconciliation. And then also staff intending to move lanes on the salary schedule. And there are what, 16? They may not all get there, but that's their intent. 
Hopefully they do. You know, that's up to them to get their credits. But they have to have their credits in by some September 15th in order to uh, qualify. So. So we have to prove their attention. No, no, we don't have to no, prove no, because no. they have to be made aware. Oh, Does okay, that yeah. mean they're taking how many credits? Mm -hmm. It takes 15, 15 more to move over to the next And how long yeah. do they have to be taken? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They can take That's years fine. if they want to. Oh, you know, but when they put the intent in, I think they think they're going to have enough to move over to that next year. We, didn't, there's, we don't have it in our CBA here that. They can only move so many lanes and yeah. so many one lane per year, and then how many lanes is in five years? Mm, I don't so think that we didn't have they that. Move one There's, lane per year. Okay. So they can have 45 credits sitting. So they can move they every can year. Move year they, yeah. Okay. I know because some still just yeah. five. Yeah. That's something they can do. Yeah, you can only use the move like five or seven yeah. years or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, and then I don't know, there's just one other thing you just have to bring up because Chad hasn't been here. This is the fifth meeting that he's missed. Um, and per Montana law, after three consecutive meetings, technically that position is vacant. So, but we have to make take action as a board, which we obviously can't do that tonight. So, I don't know if that's something we want to talk about at the next meeting because this is his third regular meeting and then there's been two special meetings. And I don't know why he's not here. I haven't been notified. I don't think anybody's been notified. So, been three consecutive meetings. Yep. So this is the fifth one. Well, I don't know. That's including the special meetings, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly frustrating. Yeah, so I don't know if that's something that we want to talk about at the next meeting. We'd have to take action as a board, but it might make sense to do that. And hopefully he could be here and we can, because you have to have good cause, but I don't have any cause. I don't think anybody's been notified. Um, you were notified? Yeah. So I don't know. Just in the email that I received, it said he was out of town. But uh, Yeah. And I know his job has changed. Um, and I only know this because I have his daughter in one of my classes, but I think he's like in Arkansas two weeks on, two weeks off. So I know it's, I don't know. Well, we had a Zoom link set up for him tonight, but he didn't join. So I don't know, is that something you want to put on the next? I, I think it definitely should be considered. I, I, I think when you've got somebody that misses five meetings in a row, um, well, it's a problem that we don't get a quorum. I mean, uh, it's exactly what I was going to say. Then, you know, the rest of us are, are making up the quorum. Um, I, I, that can't go on indefinitely. Right. Think. Well, and if we don't know he's going to be here, because, you know, like if Gretchen wanted to take the meeting off for a reason and we knew and he didn't tell us he wasn't here and then we show up and we don't have a quorum, mm -hmm. we can't do business. So, no, I, I think it's really important that whoever puts their name on it. Actually, it's more than that. I mean, it's a formal, mm -hmm. yeah, a commitment. you know, yeah. a formal commitment. If you do that, I think you have to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, I think if, if you, I think I think it needs to be definitely considered at the next meeting. Put on the agenda. Is this something that occurred here in our school no. before? Precedent for other other school districts? Oh, I'm, yeah, it's happened other places. Yeah. 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 Would he be do we want to right? afford him the opportunity to come at the next meeting yeah. and speak yeah. and then yeah. We well yeah and hopefully he'll be here and we can have a conversation a, yeah. you know yeah. I mean, and i think he would when he's been here he's been a decent board member so mm -hmm. i don't you know it's kind of a bummer but i don't know if with his job maybe he yeah he can't do it anymore i don't know but that's that's why if you put it on the agenda let him know yeah. that that it will let if he has an opportunity to see that on the agenda and if he chooses to Come, I mean, everybody would be glad to listen to him. It's yeah. just well, that he can do it. Through, it doesn't even have to be through Google or Zoom. It can just be on the phone, too, right? Like yeah. So it doesn't have to. As chair, would you reach out to him beforehand? Just yeah. to let him know this is the situation. Yeah, I can't take that with you. But just so you're aware, I mean, it's never yeah. happened before, but it's kind of like this is. But there is precedent. I mean, yeah, well, it's a Montana law. Yeah. Yeah. Like he missed three consecutive, and MTSBA always mm -hmm. says don't count the special meetings because he missed a special meeting, a regular meeting, a special meeting, and that's three. And then he missed last regular meeting and then now this regular meeting. So it's been five in a row. Okay. Okay. Well,
Well, that the last is... special meeting was pretty hard to get into. Yeah, <laughs> <was> the... <laughs> <laughs> I really well, tried for like 15 minutes, minutes, and then pretty soon I got a message. Oh, we're done. I kept getting a random password. I guessed at the password five times, but it locked me out. Okay, then we just need a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I second it. Okay, then. Thank you guys.